All right. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, we're very happy to present an update uh, for OCP NIC 3.0, mainly focusing on Gen 6 support. Uh, when we were doing these slides, uh, it was not yet there, but I was just talking with Jason. It's yeah. now published, right? Yeah, so Gen 6 is now published about an hour ago. I discussed this as of 1.5, which is just a few weeks ago. Gen 6 is now part of the specification. OK, so uh, for this presentation, uh, I'll start with talking about Gen 6 support, and then John and Jason will uh, cover the uh, thermal and SI test fixtures. I can drive. <laughs> uh, so to begin with, uh, we, we had two form factor uh, we started with, small form factor and uh, tall small form factor. This was 16 PCA lane, uh, which had support for up to four PCA RAF clock and purse signals. And why this was the case is to cover the scenarios where you have four root complexes within system, which want to share a, a NIC, or you have four independent nodes which want to share a NIC. So up to four root complex connectivity. And then recently we introduced this dual small form factor and a tall version of that, as well as what used to be large form factor. This is where you have up to 32 PCI lanes, and you can just think about it as just double the support in terms of how many signals uh, ref clock and purse, and then that means you can support up to eight host connectivity. Uh, so this, uh, as I was talking with Jason, we had support up to Gen 5, but as of today now, it's up to Gen 6. It's all published. Uh, it also has corresponding support for manageability, MCTP PCI VDM, which is recently released. That also supports Gen 6. So we are at a point now OCP NIC 3.0 is fully uh, supporting PCI Gen 6. And for Gen 6 specific support, just to go a little bit into it, is uh, the compliance-wise PCI Gen 6 was released, and there, there are a number of erratas and then some enhancements. So this spec is compliant to the latest version, uh, minor update 6.2. That's what we are focusing on. And then the lane configuration stays the same for small form factor and TSFF 16, and then 32 for uh, other form factor DSFF, TS TDSF, and LFF. And Gen 6 was a big change from PCI standpoint. It introduced both fleet mode and non fleet mode. Uh, both support is built into the OCP NIC, uh, both from the data plane standpoint as well as from the manageability side. And all the PCI bifurcation support you have is covered um, for Gen 6. And then, as I mentioned before, PCI VDM support, MCTP or PCI VDM support is already at Gen 6. So the whole ecosystem for OCP NIC with Gen 6 support is in place. What you are seeing on the side is the table that number of us who are sitting here collaborated and talked about quite a lot to converge on what are the tolerant for those parameters, including some of the loss parameters here. I, I won't go into details of that. But this is what you will see in the latest version of the spec. And now I'm going to hand it to John for next. Thanks, Hemel. One of the things when we started the OCP NIC project we wanted to do was to create an entire ecosystem, not only a specification for the OCP NIC, but also the test and validation method to make it easier for adapter manufacturers to go into systems and for system manufacturers to design systems that will take anyone's adapter. Part of that has been to not only define the standard, so in this case an OCP NIC, uh, the new one being the DSFF, it's to develop that into an ecosystem. Well, what that takes is test fixtures. And we've been releasing these uh, since the uh, SFF LFF, uh, started with PCI Gen 3. And now we're at Gen 6 for uh, the PCI Express lanes. So not much has changed. Uh, we're following the PCI SIG guidelines in their chem spec, um, you know, as, as guided by the base spec. So we're compliant to those with the uh, actual information that was presented on the slide prior. 
we use the same test methodology. So we're not reinventing the, the test methodology here. And that's important because now the test equipment vendors don't have to support a difference between testing a chem card versus testing an OCP NIC. What that does is that gives us the alignment in, in the field so that as a card vendor, if you're compliant using the test fixtures that are provided or build your own with the, within the uh, compliance guidelines, you can be fairly certain that it's gonna work in a system that is compliant with those same guidelines. And, and that's really critical, right? I think it's also helped accelerate the adoption of the OCP NIC. So what did we do? We continue in the OCP NIC subgroup to push the boundaries of connectivity on PCIe. So as uh, Jason just said, we have uh, Gen 6 just released in the 1.5 spec. We're already looking at Gen 7, right? That's gonna be the next uh, speed bump. And it's imperative that we get there. Um, one of the uh, uh, test fixtures that we've redesigned, and Jason's gonna talk about it, is the uh, CBB board for Gen 6. We've also updated our thermal test fixture to be more OCP-like, um, and it supports Gen 6 now as well. And so we want to maintain the parity with the OCP spec of the test fixtures with the actual specification. So from a high level, we're trying to follow that um, develop and um, alignment in the community by providing these uh, test fixtures to the community. So how that's gonna look out here. So right now, um, besides what was discussed in the last hour where we have a mechanical shock and vibe test fixture here, we're talking about the thermal test fixture as well as the uh, SI test fixtures. The, the current one today um, is, is meant to be capable for the Gen 6 that is gonna be compatible with DC MHS. Uh, so you can basically take a motherboard, an FLW or a Steno that includes uh, the, the cabling connectors from that and be able to cable to this thermal test fixture. Uh, the SI test fixtures will then be compatible from the connector point of view. Just kind of getting to some of the specifics of how this looks like from a signal integrity perspective, you have to test two things, right? You have to test both the compute server as well as the, uh, the NIC cards. So there's two different uh, form factors for that. There's the compliance load board, which are meant for computing servers, as well as the uh, compliance baseboards, which are meant for the basically the NIC cards um, in this particular point of view. Uh, today, or when we designed the, the CLB meant for servers, knowing that Gen 6 has the same Nyquist bandwidth as Gen 5, basically the 64 gig gigatransactions per second, we were trying to ensure that when Gen 6 finalized that it will basically be able to be used as a compliance fixture. So right now today, for CLB, you, are, you can basically leverage the Gen 5 CLBs that were already built today for Gen 6 systems. Um, that, that is basically the first picture on the, the left side. The, the one in the, the bottom middle, the green one, is the SFF CBB. So the SFF is the current uh, form factor today. This one had been designed up to Gen 5. Uh, we are going to eventually be looking at uh, try to test that, that there's one aspect of the connector itself. Do we need to ensure from the SFF point of view, um, can that actually meet the Gen 6 requirements? If not, potentially we may have to replace the, the TA-1002 connector uh, to get the board to be able to be rated so that it could be used for uh, Gen 6 CLB, uh, sorry, Gen 6 uh, NIC cards. And then on the right, and this has kind of been a work in progress too, and actually we have a demo of it. Uh, we also developed the dual small fem form factor CBB. So um, this kind of today here, um, one of the things on this, um, given that you have to do 32 lanes of PCIe, there's a lot of uh, coaxial connectors that you have to add to that. Um, I can't do the math, but well over 100. Um, and each of those are about 20 bucks. So this is a very expensive board. It is definitely something we want to get it done right. Um, and it's just one of the challenges you have to deal with, with uh, as you keep moving up uh, the speeds within this. Um, that, so right now that's a, a demo board today. Uh, we're still working through trying to fine tune what'll be used for Gen 6. So in terms of contribution, 
for companies that are definitely interested in uh, building NIC cards that are supporting up to Gen 6. Definitely would love your help as, as part of our, our NIC community, offering some test coverage to help prove in those values and then contributing that to the open community with us. Um, so that, that's kind of the, uh, the signal integrity test fixtures. From the thermal test fixture point of view, it's very similar to how we developed the, uh, the prior one that was used for the SFF. Um, this one's now been up upgraded. So before we had like a chem connector on the bottom. So basically it doesn't have its own processor on it. You have to cable to uh, another motherboard to be able to run and do interoperable, uh, basically the compliance testing uh, with a, a particular NIC to do thermal testing. Um, for this, we went ahead and upgraded the, uh, the connector to be more the, uh, I think it's called the PIC Power plus uh, MXIO um, connector that is on DCMHS boards today. So you just get a cable to cable from, from the motherboard to this uh, to do the uh, system uh, testing with it. Um, you then basically take this thermal test fixture, you plug it into a, uh, basically either like a flow bench or some sort of air uh, uh, pressure so that um, you can then perform your thermal testing with it. So everything has been, it, a lot of it's already been, as John kind of said earlier, was uh, we definitely didn't want to create any sort of new customizations with this. We all wanted to be backward compatible that what we did for the SFF OCP NIC as well, which was compatible to PCI chem cards in theory, Everyone should be able to use the same test and measurement equipment, leverage the same test scripts uh, to be able to do the, the necessary testing for thermal. Additionally to that is it's quite a manual process to do something like this. Last year, we also contributed, uh, there's an MCU on the board. Uh, at one point when we first developed this, it was just kind of a custom image and it did a few things. But we wanted to create something that was not only um, more flexible that could be used for automation test scripts, but also contributed. So we actually, even though we have more of a hardware-centric group, uh, we actually did contribute uh, this MCU firmware software. Um, it's now on the OCP GitHub, um, and what was used for the SFF test fixture can be used also for the DSFF test fixture. So if anyone has to do something very specific for your particular test cases, you can obviously go to the GitHub make your necessary changes. I would like for you all to contribute what you change to to help benefit our community. But it is some, definitely something that we're always constantly thinking about how we can continue to innovate, scale, and make this much more interoperable with our community. Which kind of leads me to like the, the final point here. You know, so Myself, you know, we, we work with multiple system providers as well as NIC partners. You know, we like for everyone to continue um, supporting the NIC. Uh, Gen 7 is not just an incremental thing. It's a pretty big deal on um, what we're going to have to do from the NIC point of view. Additionally, uh, thermals, uh, which was mentioned an hour ago, too. That is a big challenge. There's so much you can do if you think about this being coplanar to the processors on the hot aisle. Um, Thermally, being able to cool these things are still very much a challenge, and we may have to be one day starting to move towards the liquid cooling sort of view. Um, beyond that, what else, what else did I not cover? You have a mic. I think one of the things that, um, you know, specifically in the call to action is the thermal test fixture. What you see here is a mock up, and it's built on the same principles as the prior generation. We do know that, I've heard rumblings that some of the real world testing isn't matching the fixture. Uh, we wanna fix that. So we have some feedback from one particular company. We're gonna incorporate that. But if you have some evidence that the fixture's not uh, a reliable source of thermal data, we need to know so we can go fix it. Because when we, re when we release the DSFF thermal fixture, we want it to be able to support the SFF and DSFF. So we'll, we'll make the mechanical parts where you could test one SFF in it. That'll get you to Gen 6. But it needs to be a representative of uh, a real life system. So if you have that information, we'd love to hear it in the, uh, in the subgroup. Yeah, thank you. Uh, otherwise, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We have time for a couple of questions. 
I have one question. So what is the purpose of SI fixture? So are you checking the informative injection loss, return loss, or cross stop? So the, the SI test fixtures are testing the uh, uh, margin on the PCIe bus. So as the, as the speeds of PCI get up, the, uh, the amount of testing necessary to make sure you have margin on the bus is more difficult. So we've, we've basically copied what Kim does in the PCI SIG, which is provide a way to, to test at the maximum insertion loss for the uh, segment and, and test the margins on the card. So it's a, an identical procedure to what Kim does for testing Kim cards, but it's, it's uh, for the uh, OCP NIC. And so we want to make sure that under all conditions that or worst case conditions, I should say, that the PCIe bus is solid and, and doesn't have anything SI related that would cause errors. Got it, then if I understand correctly, your fixture is mimic the worst case scenario injection loss and crosstalk situation like CAM. So the way the SIG does it is they have a CBB board and then they have the test equipment, but they put an ISI board uh, in between and that way the first step is to is to measure the loss there to get it to the limit, whether that's 32, uh, minus 32 dB or minus 36 dB, depending on your okay. thing. So it's, it's designed where you, you need the SIG's ISI board. We're not providing the ISI board because we want people that are testing it to be a member of the SIG, to have the experience and the knowledge where you can go to the SIG and get that uh, test equipment. Got it, thanks. Thank you. Any thought to using ganged RF on the SBB board with 32 channels of PCI Express? I think it's bigger and bigger and those connectors can get smaller and smaller. SI challenges could be. So today we use uh, MMPX connectors. They are rated up to 80 giga, gigabit or gigabod of uh, space. We're gonna have to think about what we're gonna use for 160. Thank you. Yeah, I think the real thing here is we're gonna follow what the, the uh, PCI SIG does and use the same connectors. That yeah. way the same cable packages work. Uh, yes, uh, in terms of the SI board, uh, it is a new design? It is a new design. We actually have two designs yeah. um, that we're doing because at this, at, at this rate, it has been suggested that the existing uh, Gen 5 fixtures won't operate well at Gen 6 speeds. Uh, and so we've done one with MicroStrip and one with StripLine. And we're going to test both of them. Um, there's several people in the OCP NIC they are going to test them. But we did use the same methodology as our Gen 5 test fixtures. It has all of the hooks that you would find on a PCI Chem yeah. test fixture. But we are doing both sets of uh, route types to see which actually is better. Yeah, which I do agree, because you have the same Nyquist, but you are PAM4. So that means right away, you lose yeah. 9 dB. And right. your crosstalk is now much more. So yes. probably a strip line would be better, because you don't have the far end crosstalk. But uh, it would. Uh, is this now in the? Can, can we review that, maybe the board? So I can make it, contact me, I can make it available to you. It is part of the uh, OCP Nix Google Cloud. It's not on our wiki yet, um, but we would like some feedback. So yeah, that find would me be after great. this. Yeah, I'm yeah, more than you. happy to look at it. Thank yeah, you. Thank you very much. Yes, thank you. And anybody else that would like to look at the, um, at the board design, um, you know, please reach out and Jason or one of the other subgroup people will be happy to do it. Right. We, we can take one more question. Have you guys uh, considered a, the Google APEC standard? I don't know. What do you think? <laughs> Is it, did, it, have they contributed to the OCP uh, community? Well, uh, they have. Uh, yeah. It's from what I heard. Okay. Is that going to make it into? It could, yeah. I mean, right now this one's the OCP NIC, but uh, that would be interesting. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Damien. In general, we are aware there are, there are at least three uh, competing form factors doing very similar things, and I think we are figuring out. Yeah. Thank you, Jason, John, and Hamill.